Hello, my name is Professor Doug McAvoy. Um, I'm the principal investigator of the uh, sleep apnea cardiovascular endpoints study. The SAVE study was the largest uh, sleep apnea trial ever conducted. We enrolled 2,700 patients from 89 hospitals in seven countries. The patients had uh, a combination of uh, established cardiovascular disease, either had heart, previous had a heart attack or a stroke, and they also had obstructive sleep apnea and they were followed for an average of three and a half years. The study was a collaboration between investigators at Flinders University and the George Institute for Global Health at the University of Sydney. Why did we undertake the SAVE study? We wanted to know whether the treatment of obstructive sleep apnea would benefit people with cardiovascular disease. And the reason we were interested to, to know this uh, was that previous studies had shown that there appeared to be a link between obstructive sleep apnea and premature cardiovascular events such as stroke and heart attack. We asked patients who had cardiovascular disease whether they'd be interested to participate in the study and we conducted a simple test on them to see whether or not they had coexisting obstructive sleep apnea. We randomised or um, divided the patients into two groups. Those who were treated for obstructive sleep apnea with the standard treatment of continuous positive airway pressure, the use of a mask at night to prevent the obstructions. And the other half would continue to be treated with their usual care. We followed up the patients very carefully. We investigated or recorded whether or not they'd had uh, a stroke, a heart attack, or they'd been admitted to hospital for heart failure, uh, a minor stroke, or um, unstable coronary artery disease, or if they in fact had died from any of these events. We also uh, measured very carefully what the impact of the treatment of the CPAP was. We could not find a reduction in the number of strokes, heart attacks or admissions to hospital for cardiovascular events. What we did find was remarkable improvements in the well-being of the patients. They were less sleepy during the day, less depressed, they needed less time from work due to illness and their overall quality of life was remarkably improved. One of the limitations of CPAP treatment for obstructive sleep apnea is that not every patient can successfully use the therapy. We found in this study that the average adherence or use of the treatment at night was just 3.3 hours. Now while the study was not designed to definitively answer this question, we did find evidence that suggested that patients who were able to use the CPAP more than four hours appeared to have a benefit in terms of reduced risk of stroke in the future.